everybody, I'm Miss Karen at Adams Memorial Library. Thank you for joining me and Mr. Alex for this month's Inquire Within program. So for February, we are focusing on the Olympics and Let's Go Luna. If you've ever watched Let's Go Luna, you know that Luna and her friends travel around the world. Just like in the Olympics, athletes come from around the world to take part in the Olympic Games. So we're putting the two together to celebrate. So the Olympics are still going on for a little bit this week. But even if the Olympics end, you can keep the Olympic spirit through all of February or all year long, if you'd like. The kits we have for you this month, which you can pick up by coming into the children's room or by calling and reserving them and picking them up through curbside service. Those kits will have a lot of different activities in, including one that's not actually from Luna. This is from Arthur, but this is how to have your own family Olympics at home. You can do uh, make a family obstacle course. You can play balloon volleyball. You can do some other things like that. And one of the other activities that Mr. Alex will show you is making your own gold medal. So after you do your family Olympics, you can have your own medal ceremony too. Some other things we'll be doing today. We'll be making a, a mosaic and making a Chinese dragon puppet since the Olympics are taking place in China this year. Plus, we'll do a couple more Luna things that I'll show you. And if you're ready to celebrate the Olympics with us, keep watching and we'll get started. Hello, friends. Bonjour, mes amis. Ni hao peng yo. Those are three languages that you might hear at the Olympics. English, French, and Mandarin Chinese. And they all mean, hello, friends. So in your kit, we have a paper with how to say hello in a lot of the different languages that the athletes might speak. So if you hear anybody say hello one of these ways, or if you see a, a see an athlete from one of these countries, you can mark it off on here, or you can mark it off on this map. That will give you two, it's a map of the world. You can put it up like this, or if you wanna see it more like a globe, you can circle it around like this and see how the world looks that way. But if you would like, you can put this map up and you can decorate it with Luna and her friends. Luna and Andy and Carmen and Leo. You can cut these out and decorate them too. Maybe if you hear from somebody from a different country, every time you hear of a different place, you can put that up or you can just use them to decorate however you would like. There will also be some cards from Luna saying friends in some of the places that Luna's visited. Or if you would like to send a card to your friend, you can use a Let's Go Luna postcard and do it that way. Hi friends. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mr. Alex and I'm here to introduce our first craft activity. Now, if you've already had your home Olympics like Miss Karen talked about, or maybe you're planning one, then you might want to give out a gold medal, just like those who win the real Olympic games. So in order to do so, we're going to grab some of our oven baked clay and we're going to make our very own gold medals. So let me show you what we need and how you can do that at home. In order to make your very own Olympic gold medal, we're going to need the one ounce of gold oven baked clay that we have in your kit, the parchment paper and foil that's in your kit. And I'll talk a little bit about how I folded that later. You're going to need your ribbon, your glue, but not for the actual glue itself. You're actually going to want some things to shape uh, the clay and to put designs in it. And the reason I like the glue is that this circle of the cap is about the right size for an Olympic ring. So this is optional. You may also want to use your toothpicks that are included or your plastic knife to decorate with. If there are other shapes that you'd like to imprint into your clay, uh, like for instance, like I said, I like to use the circle, then you may want to grab a few additional things from home. But in order to build our metal, the first thing we need to do is shape our clay. So as I mentioned, we are going to take our parchment paper and our aluminum foil here, and we are going to fold them into this little tray with the parchment paper on top and the aluminum foil on the bottom. Now this is going to do two things. It's going to give us a surface that we can work on on our table and not worry about our clay sticking to it, but it'll also, uh, with the help of the foil, give us a way that we can bake our clay. Uh, we can stick this right in the oven and then we won't have to put our clay on any good pots or pans from home. 
So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is fold your foil and your parchment paper into a little tray like this, and then grab your clay and start working with it to sort of warm it up and make it more malleable, make it easier to work with. So once we have something like this, most of the Olympic medals are round, although again, we're designing on a metal, so you could have your own shape. And all I do to make a round Olympic medal is I just sort of take the palm of my hand and flatten out our clay. Something that you want to keep in mind as you work your clay and as you shape it is that your the time you're going to spend baking it is going to depend on how thick your clay is. So for instance, if we have a really, really thick piece of clay, it's going to take a while to bake. Uh, the instructions talk about for each quarter inch, you'll want to bake it about 15 minutes. And so we want to make it about a quarter to a half an inch thick for our metal. And we can just keep stretching and working our clay into a circle. Something else that I like to do if I want to even out the edges is sort of roll it along the table to uh, add a rounded edge to the metal, but eventually we should have a shape that looks like this. Now, once we've done that, we can add the part of our metal that the ribbon is going to attach to. And all I do for that is just take the top of our circle and pinch it, and then flatten that out, and pinch it, and flatten it out. And as I keep doing that, we're going to have a shape that almost looks like a little bit of a pumpkin, like this, and we can just repeat that until we have a shape that we're happy with. And again, if we want to flatten out our metal even a little bit more, give us more surface area to work with, we can do that. And we'll just keep working with our metal and our clay until it is happy, or until it's a shape that we're happy with. So for instance, we might have something like this, and I think that that looks pretty good for the start of our metal. So, now it's time to add the design for our metal. There have been various Olympic metal designs over the years, and yours can be anything that you like, because again, this is our very own metal. I, like I said, like making the Olympic rings, so I just took my glue cap, and I gently pressed it into the clay in that pattern. Now, the reason that I say gently is because we don't want our pattern to cut through the entirety of our clay. If it goes the whole way through and separates it, it won't be able to bake and that won't be very good. So we're just going to press it in like this until we have a pattern that we're happy with. And I think that's pretty good. For instance, you can see that one of my rings is kind of close to the edge, so maybe I might want to start over and rework my clay back into the shape and try again. You can give it multiple tries and that's one of the great things about this clay is that you can rework it. But I like how this looks. So I'm also going to take my toothpick and I'm going to write the year 2022 into the bottom of it. Just like this. And keep in mind that as you're doing this, you are actually carving out bits of clay. So you may have little uh, parts of your clay that you're gonna need to remove, but I think that that looks pretty good. So finally, we're going to add the part for our ribbon to hang from. So we created this sort of stem at the top of our shape here earlier. And all we're going to do is with our knife, if your space is big enough, or with our toothpick, if you have a smaller space, is sort of press the whole way through and carve out a place to hang our ribbon from. Now, this is the only time that we want to push the whole way through our clay because we do actually want to remove this little bit of clay. So I'm just going to do that. And as you can see, I've marked out a space. And then if I turn over on the other side, I can sort of see there are some dots where I poked through. And I'm gonna use that as guidelines to attack it from the other side as well. Uh, really making sure we've carved the whole way through our clay. And that'll make this little piece very easy to remove. So we'll go ahead and poke that through, removing the clay from our metal. And again, we can gently work it with our fingers or any of our tools. Uh, to make it exactly the shape that we want it to be. So we'll have something like this. And now we can set aside our toothpick and our glue stick and everything else that we've used to shape our metal because we have finished. It is time to bake our oven baked clay. So some guidelines for baking our metal. As you can see uh, on the side of the wrapper, although yours might be a little bit cut up from us separating out the clay because these are two ounce blocks and you need one ounce to make this, uh, there are some instructions. So there are some reminders that I'm going to include in this video, but the most important is that you want to preheat the oven to 275 degrees. You're going to bake your metal about 15 minutes for each quarter inch of clay. So again, sort of figure out how thick your piece is at its thickest point, and you'll want to bake it at least 15 minutes for each section. 
I've actually found that it takes a little bit longer and I actually, for something this size, left it in for about a half an hour. Then some other reminders are that you don't want to microwave this. This clay is only for oven bake and you want to make sure that you have an adult with you to help you out. So that way you don't burn yourself on either the clay or the oven. But using those guidelines, let's go ahead and bake our metal and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as we're done. And after baking our oven baked clay, remember we don't want to microwave it, we are going to have something that looks like this. So we have our metal design and while the clay looks pretty similar, it won't bend and it has hardened. So at this point you can take your ribbon and feed it through the hole that we made uh, and tie that ribbon off with a knot on the end and that is going to allow you to hang or wear your Olympic medal. So you're all ready for your own awards ceremony. Okay, friends, the next thing we're going to do is make a mosaic. And mosaics are often made out of tile. You can see them on floors sometimes. Ours will be made out of paper. And you can do something like this. You can make a heart, or you could get fancy, like I did, and decide to make the Olympic rings. Yes, kind of, if you squint, it's kind of look like the rings. It's blue, yellow, black, green, and red. Mm. You kind of have to use your imagination a little bit. But did you know that the Olympic rings, these colors, blue, yellow, black, green, and red, on a white background, are because when the rings were designed in 1913, the colors represented colors on the flags of all the countries that had taken part in the 1912 Olympics. And that's where the rings came from, and that's where the flag came from. So in your kit, we will give you those colors. Blue and yellow, black, blue, yellow, black, green, and red. And white paper for a background. And if you would like to do rings like I did, you can do whatever you want. You can do Another scene from the Olympics, you could do the moon like Luna, but if you do decide to do the rings, what I did was take this pattern that I copied and enlarged so it would sort of fit the paper. I put it behind my, my paper that I was working on, this white paper, and I taped it behind so it didn't move. And then I used these lines as my guide to put the paper squares down like this. Now in these instructions, it says to cut the paper into one quarter inch squares. And friends, let me tell you, if I did that, I would still be working on this. I cut mine into one inch squares like this. And if I needed it to be smaller, I just cut them down. So I could cut all my squares. I've got the blue, the ye yellow, green, black, red, cut my one inch squares and then I laid out my pattern and could I have measured this so it was all evenly spaced? Yes. Did I? No. <laughs> no. I just kind of arranged it so it was sort of looked like, like I wanted. So I laid all the paper out first and then I glued it and then I went back and so it doesn't have to be precise. I think that adds to the charm. So this is my mosaic and it's kind of fun to do. I hope you will like making one too. And if you do, I'd love to see it. You can bring in your mosaic and show us or you can take a picture and email it to us at kids at adamslib.org and show us your artwork. So I do hope you enjoy making the mosaics. Have fun. Alrighty friends, I'm back for our final activity today and that's that we're going to be making these awesome dragon puppets in representation of the host country of the Olympics China. So let me show you what we'll need and we'll get started. So making our dragon puppet is actually pretty simple. We're going to need a few things from our kit. We'll need a white sheet of construction paper, our two straws that match, as well as some crayons uh, that you'll find in your kit and any other supplies that we'll want to decorate with. You'll also need to grab scissors and tape from home. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is that we are going to want to take our piece of construction paper and we're actually going to cut it in half after folding it long ways. 
So we'll fold it like this, right in half. And then we're going to cut along this line here in the center. And that's going to split our piece of paper into halves. One of the halves is going to be the body of our dragon, and the other halves, or the other half is going to be our head and tail. So once we've cut our piece of paper in half, we can set one half aside. And then we're going to go ahead and fold our paper in half once and crease it in half a second time and crease it off and then a third time and crease that off as well. And that's about as much as we're going to be able to fold this piece of paper. But what that's going to do is when we open it up, we'll have a bit of an accordion fold like this that can be our dragon's body. So at this point, we're going to want to actually accordion fold it and just starting with the top like this, we're just going to fold it back and forth so that it will eventually form our dragon's body. And once we have something like that, we can crease it off one more time and we'll have something like this. Now, this doesn't exactly look like a dragon, so we're going to need to make our head and our tail. In order to do that, we're going to take the other half of our sheet and split it in half as well, folding it in half. And this is gonna tell us about how much space we have for each part of the dragon. One side will want to make our head and the other side will make our tail. Now I've gone ahead and designed my head and tail already like this and drew them out and uh, outlined them in marker, but you can make your design look like whatever you want it to look like. Um, so you can draw a dragon like this or a completely different dragon. It's entirely up to you. So our next step is that we have our body, we have our head and we have our tail. So we're going to need to color them in. So let's grab our crayons, our markers, and other decorating supplies and fill in our dragon. And once again, um, you saw that I used red and gold for the dragon that I showed in the example. For this dragon, I think I'm going to use some more blues. So you can use absolutely anything you want. It doesn't matter. As long as your dragon is the way that you like it, that's all that counts. So let's get coloring. And once we have colored our body, our head, and our tail of the dragon, it's going to be time to cut them out. So we're going to want to go ahead and do that now. Now that we have our head and our tail cut out, it's time to attach all of the pieces of our dragon, including the straws. Now, in the supplies for this video, I mentioned that we're going to use tape, and that's actually what I'm going to use here to attach our dragon to our puppet, but you can also use glue if you'd like. Um, I just find that that might be a little bit hard with all the wax from the crayon. It might be difficult for the glue to bond. So instead, I'm just going to tape mine on. Now, as you'll notice, our head and tail, when we align them to our body, there's going to be parts sticking out uh, of our body. So I actually recommend taking your pair of scissors and making one more cut uh, before you attach the head and the body. And that's just to round off the first and last section of the body. And that will help hide uh, the body a little bit more behind your dragon's head and tail. So we'll go ahead and do that now as well. And the one for the tail, I'm actually gonna round off quite a lot or I'm sorry, the one for the head, I'm going to actually round off quite a lot, like this. Now we can go ahead and we'll take some tape and we'll attach the head of our dragon to the puppet. Just like this. And then we'll also attach the tail of our dragon like this. Now, keep in mind, like I said, you can use glue for this as well. It is entirely up to you and what you have at home. There will be a glue stick in your kit from our mosaic activity, so you could even use that if you'd like. But now that our dragon's head and tail are attached, it is time for the final part, which is the straws, so that we can move our dragon. And I actually recommend taping the straws to our puppet in this line right here. So skipping the part where we attach the head, skipping one other full panel, and then the line in between this panel right here is where we're going to attach our straw. 
and then we'll do the same for the tail. When you attach your straws, you are going to want to make sure that they are about the same length as well. Um, so definitely keep an eye on that and try to make it as even as you can. So we've got one straw attached like that, and we'll line it up, make sure it's about the same length over here, and we'll tape on that piece as well. And just like that, we have one dragon puppet. Now, you can also make your dragon puppet move by maneuvering the straws, and that will bring your dragon to life. You may also need to take some time and re-accordion fold the middle of your dragon so that it, the body really stands out. So you can fold it like this, and now it's a little more segmented. But regardless of what you choose to do, your dragon will be awesome. Well, friends, I want to thank you for joining Miss Karen and I as we celebrate the Winter Olympics and hold our own Olympics at home. I'd also like to thank all of our friends at WQED Education and Clearview Federal Credit Union for making this program possible. Don't forget that we'd love to see how your home Olympics turn out, so be sure to send us pictures at kids at adamslip.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for updates not only about the Inquire Within programs, but everything else that we do here at the library. So, as always, happy crafting, everybody.